went to business school, law school, uh, eventually started practicing uh, construction law, uh, enjoyed the aspect of seeing something built. When I first came to Power Design, I came in the way of a divisional manager uh, where I was responsible for a, a territory uh, of large projects, working with a, a team of, of project managers and assistant project managers. I interned and worked in multiple departments from project management to lighting and have been in business development since 2010. One day, Mitch Permy called and said, I have an opening in my human resources department, and I immediately raised my hand and put my name in the mix. I have been a licensed CPA in the state of Florida for the past 20 years. Right after school, I went to work um, at the time for the largest accounting and consulting firm in the world, Arthur Anderson. He said, well, I work for this company, Power Design, and they would like you to come in and start their legal department. To which I responded, uh, thanks, but I don't really want to be a lawyer. Before Power Design, I was working with a small general contractor, and that experience, um, you know, it, it introduced me to the construction industry. I came on board Power Design nine years ago as a consultant CIA to help transition them through an Oracle implementation. It was pretty fascinating to see a company at the late end of a recession actually investing and doubling down on technology when most companies were actually trying to cut back. Power Design's evolved quite a bit over the last 30 years, and especially in the last 15 years, the last half of its existence. Um, it's really turned into a, you know, turned from a regional company into a national company, operations coast to coast. So our steering committee is really important to you know, the evolution of our company, both what it is today and the leadership platform it's creating for the future. You know, the team is not just operations, it's everything from technology to business process improvement to accounting all the cogs it takes to really make sure that, that the, what we're trying to create is able to be executed on the different platforms. Plus every member of the executive steering committee was here prior to the recession, learned a lot through the Great Recession and came out even stronger. When you look at the leadership of Power Design and look across our executive steering committee, it is pretty interesting when you get involved in the different perspectives of how we approach situations, um, challenges, and we always fall back to the framework and the position and values of what Power Design has put together for us. We have a series of regional vice presidents who work geographically across the country and are responsible for not only the operations, but for the client, for the performance, and really in that region, they incorporate all the different values and performance indicators that we want to have happen regionally. We've even developed a project dashboard that allows us a higher visibility and management on the project. So projects that are over 2,000 miles away from our corporate headquarters, we have key indicators and visibility, much more than a company that might be just down the road from the job. Traditionally, when construction companies expand and they grow, what they do is they open other offices in other specific uh, geographic locations. The reasons for that is because they don't want to be known as the out-of-town uh, person that doesn't have a local presence within the, the geographic region that they're in. Uh, us, in particular, what we've done is shaken up that model. We've had one corporate office from our whole history, and we run all of our operations out of this particular office. And what that does is gives us the ability to expand and contract in any geographic region, uh, depending on the market, depending on what our clients' needs are. Aside from Power Design's geographic growth, I'm excited to talk about Power Design's growth into the MEP space. 
both as a mechanical and plumbing contractor as well as a systems integrator. The integration of systems and its place in the future of our buildings is something we feel like our platform, our existing systems group can really leverage to really bring an entire building together. As we add mechanical and expand some of the services that Power Design offers, it is leading us to see that our teams are going to grow significantly as well, probably close to double in the next few years. And the investment in the culture that we're making today, we know is going to continue to pay off. We have an on-site cafe, on-site gym, a beautiful property that the employees can enjoy. And we do this all for them. This is an investment that's made in their work-life balance and having a place that they can be proud to call home. These strategic investments are important to ensure we get top talent, not just within electrical, but across all industries and all sectors, both public and private. The other thing that is very important too about having one corporate office is that even though we have it, we hire locally. So all of our superintendents, all of our field staff, those are actually members of the particular community of the geographic region we're in. And a lot of them have been with us for over 20 years and they are actually the local people and they feel that they do have that connection to the corporate office, but they can also achieve whatever they need to achieve on the job site because of the support that we give them and because of the community and the culture that we build. As we continue to grow, we're always looking for ways to improve our processes, not only to increase productivity, but to help with the onboarding process of new team members. So we decided to create the Eval Center to help us validate the knowledge of those new team members that wanted to join Power Design. That way we're able to, you know, communicate our best practices, teach them, show them what Power Design is all about, and then, uh, you know, make sure that at the job sites we have consistency and great quality for our customers. You know, it, it is no secret, no surprise why our customers keep coming back to Power Design. Our ability and our commitment to continually perform Perform better than the average contractor has really left our clients, you know, wanting more. I mean, this isn't our first rodeo. We've been around. We strive to find the best developers and builders out there to align with. Ones that value the relationship and also do the right thing. We also want to have strong uh, business partnerships with our um, financial partners, so our bonding company, our bank. It's critical that we have a very close relationship, that we're always connected with those partners and that they're able to grow with us and really support um, our strategies and, and our growth objectives. We don't take it lightly though. As we take on new scopes or geographies, there is a ton of strategy and analysis that happens beforehand. In true power design fashion, we measure and report on how we're doing with every customer team on each project. I'm proud to say that 93% give our team top scores. We also feel passionately about supporting our customers and staff and helping the communities where we live and work. One of my favorite ways that we do that is through our V5 program. We recycle the scrap wire on all of our job sites for cash that gets donated to employee chosen charities. That made up about half of the over $1 million donated last year. So with an eye on the future, no one's trying harder than we are to positively impact the industry. So apprenticeship programs are a tool that we're utilizing currently in order to combat the labor shortage. We have recently got our apprenticeship program approved by the federal government. We collaborate with our partners, not only on helping communities, but also with trade advocacy and how we can help each other leverage technologies to stay ahead of the curve. So I'm strongly of the opinion that every company today is a technology company at heart. Power design or construction is gonna go through this massive disruption over the next decade. We seem to have made the right investments. We seem to have ourselves actually kind of poised in the perfect manner to actually gonna help us lead the charge. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what companies can actually make that transition successfully. And uh, our intentions are to actually going to partner up with companies, be it suppliers, vendors, software companies, actually allow us actually going to move forward into a successful, uh, successful future. I tell you, I'm excited about the future. Uh, as I mentioned, starting here in 2006, the company has changed and, and progressed into something so amazing and so hard to understand you know, at that time, what it could be. What makes Power Design different is the relentless pursuit of continuous improvement. Just when we think we've gotten much better, we've improved in a certain area we've been targeting to, 
we raise the bar, and when we reach that bar, we raise it again and again and again. You hear about people saying that they put in 110%, and that's usually hyperbole, but at Power Design, it's a true statement. A dynamic organization like this creates an environment that brings out of you more than you knew that you had. 12 years ago when I joined Power Design, I was proud of the company that it was, but even more excited about the company it is today and what I see in its future.